ultrasound. Hello? Yeah, I don't hear any sound either. I don't either. I hear you guys, but I don't hear anybody from the school. Exactly. Yeah. Same, same with me. I don't hear anything. I just see a, um, do you see just something on the computer yeah. screen? Yes. That's it. That's all. I see your pictures and something on the computer screen. Yeah. You know what? I just went to like YouTube to see if I could bring up, you know, um, right. town hall meeting and no, the last one on there is from three weeks ago. The so, district yeah. has not began the presentation yet. So they're, they're still, they'll be on in just a second. Okay. Thank Good you. Morning. Welcome to our town hall to discuss our remote online and uh, hybrid learning plans. With us, we have each of, uh, we have Colleen Toth, who is going to be talking through the elementary plan, Todd Rings, who's going to be talking through the middle school plan, and uh, Stephen Ost, who's going to be talking through our high school plan. Thank you for those of you who submitted questions ahead of time. We have those questions and we are, will incorporate them into our presentation. And if at any time some questions are not answered, please feel free to continue to use that email address and we will be able to answer you at a later time. I'm gonna turn this over to Mrs. Toth to start off with our elementary plan. Good morning. I just wanna take this opportunity to thank everyone for tuning in. Um, I know there were a lot of questions that were submitted um, regarding our elementary hybrid, remote, and online plan. So I'm gonna walk through what it will look like um, at those various, in those various plans. So um, the hybrid model um, is our model where we are going to have A through L attending um, school um, Monday and Tuesday. And then N through Z will be, M through Z, I'm sorry, will be attending on Thursday and Friday. During that time, the focus at the elementary level is to focus on literacy and mathematics while the students are with us um, in the classroom and in the school. Um, the lessons are going to be um, focused around those um, contents. And in that same aspect, um, gifted education services will be provided, special education services will be provided, along with reading intervention services. Um, those will all be taking place while the students are in our buildings um, on those two days. When the students are not in the school, so when our A through L students are um, at home Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The focus is going to be social emotional learning, specials activities, and social studies and science. So those lessons are going to be pushed out to those students um, with oftentimes preset while the students are in school Monday and Tuesday. Um, likewise, that will split flop for the end of the week students. Um, they On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, our students who are off-site will then be engaged in lessons with social studies, science, social emotional learning, and specials. Some of the questions that came up regarding the hybrid model involved a lot of our protocols within the building. Um, rest assured, all of the building principals have been collaborating, um, working through those logistics pieces and individual emails will be coming out from the building principals. But some of the questions that ar have arisen revolve around lunch, recess, um, mask breaks, um, social distancing, um, what I like to call is physical distancing, but not social distancing. Um, we, we are encouraging students to socialize in being physically distant. So we are going to encourage our classroom teachers to take students outside for classroom instruction when possible. Um, all, all of our elementary buildings have spaces, um, outdoor spaces and grass areas and picnic tables where learning can take place outdoors. So we are certainly going to encourage our teachers to um, take students outside um, as much as possible. Um, regarding lunch, um, the um, elementary students will be eating in their classrooms. They will um, 
be lunches will be delivered if if students choose to purchase a lunch through the, the food service department. Um, those will be delivered to the classroom. Um, you know, if there's only half of the students there in any given day, um, approximately half the class. So. Uh, approximately 12 students in a class we can spread out take our masks off and 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 have a break during lunchtime after lunchtime the students will enjoy a recess um, when we have half of the students there the playgrounds that we are lucky to have such large playgrounds at our elementary schools that they will be able to um, physically distance themselves during recess but also have an opportunity to take off their masks and um, release some of their energy on the playgrounds um, other questions um, such as lockers came up. Um, students unfortunately will not be utilizing lockers. Um, we feel that students should not be sharing lockers during this time. So um, lockers will not be used at the elementary school. Um, and drinking fountains have been turned off. Um, so we are encouraging all students to bring a refillable water bottle um, and refill stations are being installed in all of the elementary buildings at this time. As in regards to the hybrid model, um, special education students will report. Um, I know there was a lot of questions um, around special education. We are currently looking at each individual IEP. When the teachers officially start back, many teachers have already been in the buildings, but when teachers officially start back on Monday, we are going to be working with our director of pupil services and the, the special education team to determine what those services are going to look like. And we will be contacting the family um, with our plans. Um, SEL, which is social emotional learning, is a, is a top priority in our district for our students, and we will make sure that our counselors are involved in those students even when they're off-site. So an, a BBH teacher will be checking in with students while they are off-site during those three days in the hybrid model. We also have our specialist teachers who are also going to be um, available throughout the week for our off-site learners to check in and help with off-site lessons. When we talk about the hybrid model, we're also going to talk about the remote learning model. And the remote learning model um, is when our county is in the purple or that time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So when we're looking at the remote learning model, um, it's going to mirror our hybrid model in terms of when instruction is delivered. Um, so if a student attends school, in school on the hybrid model on Monday, Tuesday, their teachers are going to be Zooming or um, live streaming recordings um, to their students on Monday and Tuesday in the areas of literacy and mathematics. Again, those offsite days, just like the hybrid model, those three days are going to continue to look similar with specials, social emotional learning, social studies and science. And in social studies and science, again, those are what we call asynchronous learning. Um, those are going to be recorded lessons um, where students can access them and families can access them when it's convenient for their family. Um, special education, again, just like the hybrid model with the remote, we are going to be reviewing each IEP on a case by case basis and letting those students and families know. As with gifted services, gifted services will be pushed out remotely as well um, through our, our gifted inter intervention specialists and our teachers who have those gifted credentials. Um, they, students, what, what families need to understand is the fact that when lessons are pushed out at the elementary level, in our plan, it, it has many modes. Um, we have live stream capabilities. We have live stream capabilities that are recorded. We have Zoom opportunities, and we also have opportunities in Google Classroom. So every student, regardless of the plan that you choose, will have a Google Classroom account, and all of the information will be pushed out through Google Classroom. So when we're thinking about um, the modes in which the instruction is pushed out, it's going to be determined by the lesson itself. For example, if a student is in a guided reading lesson, that's at that student's level. So it's going to be a two-way interactive 
lesson where the teacher may pop into a Zoom with a small group of students or even individually if a child needs some interventions. So Zoom is going to give you that two-way interaction where the students are able to interact with, with, the, with the teacher and a few other classmates. The live stream recorded lessons are going to be that one-way communication where the students are going to watch and then check in with a teacher via Google Classroom and our assignment that's been pushed out or an activity that's been pushed out. So the goal is to make our learning platform um, conducive to what the students are learning. Um, a math lesson could be pre-recorded. It could be live streamed and the student could then have an activity um, in Google Classroom to finish. So if a student is in the remote learning model, that does not mean that they are going to be logging in all day on their Monday and Tuesday, if that's their day for instruction, they are going to have the opportunity um, to have sign up geniuses and, and um, that instruction with um, their teacher. It just won't be from 8 a.m. or I'm sorry, 9, 10 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. It will be throughout the day and activities that can be done remotely. When we look at the online model, there are two scenarios that you will see in our online model. And this obviously is determined by how many numbers and how many families opt for that online option. If we have enough students, enough for one entire grade level cohort, a BBH teacher will be assigned to that cohort and they do not need to follow the, you know, the Monday, Wednesday necessarily, but they could push out those same Monday, I'm sorry, Monday, Tuesday lessons out across five days a week and give smaller, smaller snippets and be able to work in small, um, small groups in Zoom. Um, if we do not have enough, we will be following the hybrid model where we have a, a BBHS, a BBH CSD teacher um, pushing out or live streaming and um, recording their lessons for the Monday, Tuesday, or the Thursday, Friday, and students will have access to those lessons. A BBH CSD teacher will be checking in with our online um, students um, all throughout the week, especially on Wednesdays. Wednesdays are deep cleaning day in the district and all of our teachers and all of our staff will be available on Wednesdays to um, provide enrichment, answer questions, have office hours for our students um, during that time. If our online learners are offsite, this is not a remote, but just our online learners that are 100%, regardless of the color coding of the county and, re and regardless of our off our remote time during um, Thanksgiving and Christmas, this model will continue um, seamlessly. Um, the technology, there were several questions that came up um, regarding technology. Um, all of our students in grades K through four will have their technology. Um, right now, the third grade, I'm sorry, the fourth graders, incoming fourth graders will be bringing their devices back from the spring and they will be using those same devices that they used. Currently, our third, second and third graders have Chromebooks um, in their classes waiting for them. So when they get, arrive, if they are a hybrid student, they will be getting those when they arrive. And if you are an online student, we as building principals are going to send out communications for all materials pickups prior to the start of school. So please be on the lookout for emails coming from the buildings. Um, we will be planning meet and greets. We will be planning supply pickups. We will be planning tech um, computer pickup times as well. So there's a lot of um, things that we need to get in our students' hands prior to the start of school. Um, please keep those emails, please read the emails um, coming from us um, and we will send those out. Um, some of the other questions that may have come up, have there been any other questions submitted? 
since then. Um, arrive, I know there was some questions regarding arrival and dismissal. Um, our arrival and dismissal times are going to be exactly the same as they were last year. Um, our procedures are changing. Um, we are looking for um, at all three buildings doing a dismissal tag for um, pickup where families will not need to come in the building and sign out their, their children. They will have a dismissal tag that has been um, checked out by their families at these meet and greets and we will allow those those families with those tags to just pull up and we will have um, the number associated to their child and we'll be able to release children that way. Um, again, those, those protocols will be sent out from the building level. Um, be on the lookout for those. Um, I believe that was all the questions that came in. Um, but please be assured that all three buildings, including the preschool with Mrs. Malika, Mr. Hartland, Mrs. Chambers, and myself, have been collaborate, collaborating daily to um, ensure the success of these, these models for um, our, our students. And our teachers, they, they're eagerly waiting to welcome your children, whether they are online or in, in person. Um, we are all excited to see them and and we thank you for your patience and we thank you for your flexibility in um, in the start of the school year. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Rings who has information regarding the middle school models. Thanks Colleen. I guess it's probably bad if I just say ditto though um, because a lot of the same things are doing in the elementary are very similar to what we're doing at the middle school and probably you'll hear some of the same things that that you'll hear in the high school presentation by uh, Mr. Ost. But um, let me go through our different uh, models that we have. I'm going to kind of put the hybrid model and the remote model. Um, we're going to talk about those kind of very similar because in my mind, it is this pretty much the same thing. It's just a matter of where the kids are on certain days for the middle school. So on our, on our hybrid and remote learning plans, when kids are in school, um, they, they have a schedule they take. It starts at 8, 10 in the morning and ends at 3 5 every day. No matter what day it is, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, our expectation is that our kids are going to every one of their classes every day. It just depends on where they're attending those classes at. They might be attending them from home. They might be attending them from in person. So it just depends on the day of the week it is. If it's Monday and Tuesday, it's A through L. Obviously, if it's Thursday or Friday, it's M through Z. And on Wednesday, all of our kids are going to be doing it from remote. So those kids will follow those schedules that we have planned for them. Um, we are in the process once we get our final numbers in on the intentions and the declarations from the families of knowing how many kids there are coming and what kids are going to opt into the online academy. Then we can rerun schedules and making sure that all of our classes are balanced. Where Our hope is that our classes are going to be somewhere at the maximum of 15 to 16 for the regular classroom teachers. Um, typically, you know, it's going to be bigger if you're in band or choir or, or orchestra. But our hope is, is that... Uh, if you're in a regular classroom, it's probably going to be at the maximum of somewhere around 15 or 16, depending on the size of the room. Um, I know those were some of the questions on uh, sizes. So uh, at 8, 10 in the morning, um, every teacher in the building will be live streaming their class for the first five to 15 minutes um, or thereabout. So the kids that are on the hybrid learning model at home can see what's going on. There's a check-in every day, every period. We'll take homeroom attendance in our first period of class. And the teacher will give out whatever they're going to do for the first five or 10 minutes. And that's going to be for the whole class, whether they're sitting in front of them or whether they're sitting at home underneath the hybrid or when we're in the remote model. What happens after that is kind of dependent on each every teacher. Some of our teachers, I'm sure, will teach some days for 45 minutes live streaming and they'll live everything because that's the instruction or that's the plan for the day. Our hope is, is that they'll be chunking a lot of that stuff into about 10 or 15 minute chunks. So if I'm sitting at home, I might only see my teacher for the first, first 15 minutes. And what they'll do is, you know, here, hey, morning, boys and girls, here's what we're going to do today. Here's the assignment. Here's a sample problem. Okay, we're going to get started on it. They may turn off their camera at that point and work with the kids that are in the building, um, in their classroom at that point, on the same assignments that the kids that are sitting at home are doing. So nothing is really different. We're going to keep our same curriculum pacing for every day of the week, for every class. We aren't going to be repeating what we did on Monday and Tuesday, again, on Thursday and Friday, just because those kids are in the building. But those opportunities, when they're actually in front of us, will give us a chance to provide some intervention and some enrichment of those kids face to face on the, some of those things that they can't do. But all of our assignments and all the teachers are, are using Google Classroom. And I believe that's a district wide um, 
practice that we're using as well that they'll be doing that but the, you know the, the a lot of the things we heard in the spring was they weren't doing something every day or they only did something for like five minutes you know we didn't see our teachers enough well in this model we're going to see our teachers every single day every period whether you're hybrid or whether you're remote so they'll be doing that every day we'll go through the schedule they'll have a lunch period um you know some people have asked about lunches and how that'll work um depending on the numbers in there we're hoping that we can, I believe now we can put fifth grade in the cafeteria and sixth grade at the same time, there'll be at most four people at a table. Um, they'll be able to take their mask off obviously in order to eat and they'll go to the lines at different times. And then we'll bring our seventh and eighth graders in during their regularly assigned um, schedule time that they have as well. So that's how we'll kind of handle lunch. Um, we are going to offer a recess or a mask break for all of our grade levels. I'm sure that grades six, seven, and eight will be happy to hear that. But we are planning on, uh, just like in fifth grade, the fifth graders will go outside and have recess. We'll be doing the same thing for grades six, seven, and eight. And as long as a physical distance, as Ms. Toth said, or social distance outside, we're going to permit them to take off their mask as long as, again, they keep that social distance of, of at least six feet or greater just to kind of give them a break um, opposite their lunch period. So that will be for all three grade level or all four grade levels at the middle school this year, um, just simply because of what's going on and uh, knowing that those kids will need some time, some downtime outside, especially when the weather is nice. Obviously when the weather's nice or not nice, um, we'll be back into our normal enrichment intervention where teachers and kids can and meet and see each other if they need to. And they can do that um, from day one if they need some extra time with a teacher um, during the EI period that we have opposite your lunch, if they don't want to go outside, we'll still have that, those opportunities available for those kids and students who may need to see somebody. So really the hybrid model and the remote learning plan are exactly the same every period, every day, Monday through Friday. What the teacher does in that 48 minutes is the creativity and independence that we trust our teachers to do on, on any given day. They should be giving assignments. They might have a Zoom call with four or five kids who are, are struggling. They might do something totally different with on Wednesdays as opposed to Thursdays, but it will be expected that each kid is expected to be in every class every day and checking in with the teacher. It may be a, a visual sign. It may be the teacher asking him to do an assignment in Google Classroom so we know they're there, but we will be taking attendance in every, every class every day, and that's the expectation that they're going through their um, schedule each day. Um, as we move to the Online Learning Academy, um, it's going to be somewhat similar, but it's just going to be a, kind of, I'll call it a, a cut down version in terms of they won't have as many opportunities to take as many classes um, online if you're in the online learning academy. So if, I'm, if I opt into the online learning academy, those are those kids who, you know, have other reasons why they don't want to be in school. Maybe they're afraid of the coronavirus. They have somebody in their home that's at risk or them themselves are at risk. Those are the kids who really should be doing the online learning model because they're just unsure of what school looks like and they're afraid they might contract this virus. In that model, we will have, um, they'll actually have two different teachers. Um, they'll have a teacher that will be assigned to every kid. Uh, again, depending on the numbers, our hope is they'll have a homeroom every day starting at 8.30, 8.45, somewhere around there, maybe even 8.10 with the rest of the middle school where they're checking in with their teacher who has been assigned to them. At that point, they'll have four classes every day. They'll have a math, a science, a social studies, and a language arts course every day. We'll be live streaming one teacher in each of those subject areas for each grade level. So if I'm a sixth grader, I would go into sixth grade language arts and I'd be watching whoever it may be that's live streaming and I'll be watching them. I won't be able to interact underneath this uh, model. Uh, if I'm an online learner, I won't be able to interact with that person. But later in the day, we'll have a language arts teacher that will be able to answer any of those questions. Be, they'll be the ones that'll be assigning grades. They'll be the ones talking to the teacher who's live streaming just to get the content back in order to get those things done. So they'll be doing that for every one of their four classes. We'll have an option that some um, students will be able to take electives and basically it will come down to what electives do they have to take or want to take. So it'd be very hard to live stream an art class or a PE class um, for an online learning academy, but we certainly could um, live stream a health class in seventh grade when health is a requirement for our um, seventh graders. So we'll have that option for them as well. Um, and, that, and then the online learners, again, they'll have a teacher, a core teacher, and then there'll be a teacher in each of their content areas that they'll be checking in with, giving them extra help, providing that intervention enrichment that they might have. So that's how our online learning model will work with that. 
Um, all of the all of the minutes of um, special ed and gifted services, those all remain the same, just as if we were in school every day with every kid uh, for the hybrid and the remote learning. They're going to be going through their classes. Um, if there are auxiliary services that some of our special ed uh, students can't get on a Monday or Tuesday or Thursday, Friday, we might bring those kids in on, on a Wednesday to make up those um, auxiliary service minutes that maybe we can't get to when they're in the building. That'll be um, done on a case by case um, basis, along with um, our case manager and probably uh, as well as an administrator will make those decisions as we get closer. Some of the questions that we've been getting in uh, specifically to the middle school, and I, I, well, one of them I think has been coming in on all of ours is, you know, how do I request if my child or, or, son, or child wants to be in the L through Z, but I'm an A through L. Um, we'll, we have a Google document started through the entire um, district, and we'll be putting all those names on there. And we'll be evaluating those a case by case basis. Um, what we're afraid of is we're going to have a lot of maybe, let's say, M through Z kids who all want to be A through L. It really cuts down on our balancing of kids. So we'll be looking at as we get closer to school, once we know exactly where kids are going and what options are choosing, but we'll be making those determinations later on as we get closer to school and let you know before we, we start the, obviously the first day of school there. Um, yes, some of them will be using Zoom. Teachers will be using Zoom throughout the day. And a lot of the stuff that it's in the middle school um, questions that I saw is a lot have to do with um, protocols and things. Once we meet with our teachers, when they come back on Monday, we're really going to finish finalizing those protocols, making sure that this makes sense with a different group of um, educators instead of just the administration who's been doing it, most of this stuff all summer long with some input from uh, spreading of teachers, teachers. But on Monday, we'll have be able to work with just our building and figure out the best way to do one way hallways in the middle school. You know, the bell schedule again is not going to change. Um, the other question we're getting a lot of is. If my son or daughter is supposed to be in school on Monday and they're not feeling well, what do I do? Can they log in and, and, and do like if I was a M 2 Z kid? Yes, they can. But again, you'll have to call your son or daughter in on that Monday if they're an A through L and they'll be marked absent for that day. But they certainly just like last year, if kids were sick, they still do work at home. They can certainly log on from home and, and watch from home, but they would be marked absent for that day that they're supposed to be in school and they don't come in because they're not feeling well. Then they'll be, they would be marked absent that, at that day as well. As far as lockers, um, there were some questions about lockers. At, at the time we've assigned every student a locker, um, we're not going to hand those out readily at the very first day of school. We're going to hold off on those. We are um, allowing students um, for the first time in ever, I believe, uh, to allow our middle school students to carry book bags from class to class. Obviously, we want to be conscious on what we're putting in our book bag, how heavy our book bag is, and those kinds of things. So. Um, our teachers will be working on, this, on the different materials that they can reduce and not have kids carry them from room to room. If there's a special circumstance where you definitely need a locker, just send us an email um, after we get school started and we'll assign a locker to your son or daughter so they have it. We also have plans that, you know, depending on the number of kids who have lockers, of not releasing kids to the lockers at the same time. So we would do a color-coded system. Each locker would have um, colors on it. So one of them might be yellow, you know, in between second and third period, anybody with a yellow locker, this is your chance to go to your locker, get your belongings and then move on yeah, between third and fourth period. It might be the blue locker day. So that's how we'll try to provide some social distancing in the locker or in the hallways themselves. But uh, again, they will not necessarily have a locker unless if they request one. And they probably won't really know that until after the first week of school, first week or two. But we have assigned them already. They've all been assigned a locker. We'll be able to hand those out as needed um, when we get there and hopefully fingers crossed in the spring we'll have everybody back so they'll have uh, their lockers at that time as well a lot of the other stuff you know you know how are we gonna uh, somebody's a couple questions about phys ed class uh, phys ed class anytime they're doing physical exertion in the school in a phys ed class they won't have to wear their mask as long as there's being social distance uh, our phys ed teachers have done a great job already with coming up with plans on removing those um, activities and games and units that where kids would share a, a ball or a baton or, or something like that. They've kind of reduced that out there and come up with a different games that they can play that doesn't involve them sharing items where they're passing things back and forth, but they can certainly um, be able to take their mask off when they're outside actually being um, exerting some type of a physical um, nature, even in the gym that will work as well and we'll keep them um, social distance as well there. Um, the, a couple of questions about early and late early dismissal and late arrivals. Uh, again, we'll be looking at those students who naturally have those things on their schedule already. 
It's not going to be a, a, a request that we're going to do. But if for some reason a kid happens to have eighth period study hall, we would call that family and say, hey, you have study hall eighth period. Would you like to have uh, early dismissal that day? The caveat there for me at the middle school is that somebody's got to come pick that child up. We're not going to release them to ride their bike home or release them to walk home because there aren't other kids leaving at that time. And I want to make sure they're safe um, in numbers if they do walk after school um, at the normal time. But we will be allowing parents to have that have that eighth period study hall off to have the option if they would like to come pick up their son or daughter early. Likewise, if for some reason they would happen to have study hall first period, then we would have a, an option where parents can drop them off. There would not be a special bus for those kids, but those kids could come in at late arrival. Um, and again, those are just kind of a, a luck of the draw, if you will based on whatever their schedule is and the, and the classes they're trying to get. Um, trying to think of some other questions that are in here. Uh, we are still off plan on offering band to those fifth graders for the first year. We'll probably start at that a little bit sooner than normal, simply because we have about 10 weeks before we go remote. So we will try to get those things uh, up and running a little bit quicker as we get going. We will be offering enriched classes in um, accelerated classes to our online academy for those kids who qualify for that. So they'll have that as well. We do have our fifth rising fifth grade parent orientation on uh, August 31st at 7 p.m. in the or at sorry 6:30 to 7:15 for the A through L kids, and then from 7:30 to 8:15 for the um, M through Z kids. Kids should not be at this meeting. This is only for parents, and we're asking that only one parent um, attend per family. Obviously. Um, we will, well, not obviously, but we will try to have a, a live version of that. I don't know how well that will work with um, parents all over the auditorium being socially distanced, but we will try to have that work in our auditorium with a microphone or something. So at least you can see that. And hopefully we, we can record that as well. So you can watch that at a different time if you need to, if you can't make it that day or are uncomfortable about coming to take a, a tour of the middle school. And then we have a, a soft opening plan for that week, starting on September 1st, 2nd, 3rd, or 4th. Hopefully you've seen the constant contact. We'll make sure it's on the our website as well about bringing in a grade level at a time, half the grade level at a time on different days in order for them to kind of tour the building, make sure they know where their classes are, We'll also be doing school pictures at that time. So kids uh, will have their school pictures done sooner um, as opposed to taking some um, time during the week when we're in class, limited amount of time. We'll try to do that before school even starts. So we'll be doing that that week. We'll be sending another schedule out, but it's what was already sent as well, but we'll try to duplicate that as we get closer. I don't think there were any other questions specifically to middle school. So I'm gonna turn it over now to uh, Mr. Ost. Good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the team at the high school, I wanted to welcome everyone back to uh, the 2020-21 school year. Um, uh, our plan was, uh, it, it was based on a lot of things that we learned from the spring, uh, as well as input that we were, we received from staff and families, um, both as, as we concluded last school year, and as we um, were survey and, and taking in input from our, our team members as we were getting ready to start the school year. Um, we tried to focus on a couple of key principles uh, as we built this plan. Um, and as Todd mentioned, you know, there are a number of things that you, you know, you're gonna hear over again, um, but you know, our guiding principles, we want to make sure that our students are mastering content um, that's best achieved through you know, high levels of engagement. Um, you know, unfortunately, due to the situation that we're in um, with, you know, being forced into a hybrid learning model or an online learning model, um, we really need to maximize our time that we have with students on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, one of the key things there is focusing on personalized attention, uh, regardless of what model um, that a family chooses for their, their son or daughter. Um, so to look at the hybrid model, um, once again, similar to the other buildings in the district, uh, our students that elect or select this model, they will be attending school um, based on their last name. Um, so students Mondays and Tuesdays with the, will attend uh, if their last names are A through L. Um, you know, once again, uh, students last names M, M through Z will attend Thursdays and Fridays. Um, one of the big lessons that, that we learned uh, in the spring um, and the guiding principles in the spring, uh, you know, based on the fact that we hadn't 
encountered a situation like this, we really, you know, try to approach, approach the situation with flexibility, um, leniency, and um, in doing so, I think that, uh, you know, some of our students uh, veered off of, of a traditional school day uh, when it came to completing work, attending class, etc. Um, so in an effort to uh, restore some of those 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 principles, some of those routines uh, with, with with a normal school day. Um, we are asking all of our students, uh, whether they are in the hybrid model or the online learning model, um, or in the situation from Thanksgiving to winter break when our districts in the remote learning model. Uh, we are asking all of our students to follow a school day, uh, a designated schedule, and I'll talk through that as as we look at at, at the different models. Um, so when, when you think of a hybrid learning model, our teachers uh, and, and one of my, my staff members, you know, explained that, that this uh, perfectly in one of our team meetings just this week, um, you know, they're approaching uh, planning for, for, for lessons and their time with students on a weekly basis. So, so they're thinking of, you know, what do I need to do? You know, what do I need to leverage um, while I have my students in person? Um, so then you think of, you know, what happens better when students are in person versus when, when they're, you know, working from home. Um, so what you'll see is when students are in person, you're gonna see more opportunities for feedback, um, more opportunities for students to practice things and, and received, uh, you know, direct input from from teachers. Uh, you'll see opportunities for collaborative, safe, collaborative learning, um, and and personalized attention uh, with with the students. Uh, when students aren't in the classroom, um, you know, we're going to leverage technology. Uh, you, you know, both through daily check-ins. Um, uh, as well as uh, asynchronous learning opportunities. So this could be a recorded video from a teacher. Um, this could be an assignment that they work on, um, or it could be a situation where uh, the students off campus would be working with the students on campus. This could look like a, a virtual uh, Socratic seminar. Um, this could look like uh, virtual collaborative learning uh, where, where you know, a student on campus is, is in a group with students off campus. Um, so our teachers are going to use their creativity uh, to develop uh, plans by a week that, that just really leverage their time together and maximize that uh, so our students can master, master the content. Um, with regard to our schedule, uh, our daily schedule has adjusted slightly um, in the interest of reducing gathering times, um, promoting safety. Uh, we have eliminated homeroom from our, our daily schedule this school year. Um, we looked at that, you know, you know while um, our model does uh, have um, our homeroom teachers staying with students for four years, um, we felt that, that that time would be better served um, going back into some of, some of our instructional day, as well as eliminating that gathering. So that's one last group of students that, that our students will um, have to be with during the school day. Um, another thing that, that, that we're looking at is uh, students grades 10 through uh, 12 will have the opportunity with parent permission, uh, as long as they're in good academic standing, to have a late arrival, uh, an early dismissal, um, or an open campus uh, during the school day. Um, currently, uh, you know, if all of our students selected the hybrid model, um, our largest lunch period would be 150 students. Um, uh, we have seating in our cafeteria for 450 students. Uh, so our hope is by offering an open campus, uh, uh, with you know, an open campus privilege, uh, that, that we can reduce that gathering even further um, to keep our, our students safe. Um, one question that comes up, I think, both with uh, the hybrid and the online, um, you know, will I still have the ability to take classes at CVCC? Um, you know, I'm, I'm currently enrolled in a couple of College Credit Plus classes. Will I still be able to do those? Um, and, the, and the answer is yes, regardless of which learning model you select, um, you will still be able to. Um, to take your College Credit Plus classes, uh, you'll still be able to um, attend CVCC. Um, one aspect, uh, which goes back to the importance of following a daily schedule, um, it re relates directly with that. You know, in the spring, um, and, and really even uh, before we started the spring, uh, as our students selected classes for this school year, 
um, you know, you know, we, we made a, we built a schedule to make sure that students had access to both CCP offerings as well as CVCC offerings. And we want to continue to make sure that that's available for our students. Um, switching over to the online um, learning model, uh, you know, the, the, the big difference between the online learning model and the schedule for the hybrid learning model um, is just going to be the, the, the start times. Um, so our students that select the online learning model um, and based on our survey, we're estimating anywhere from eight to 12 percent of our students are going to are going to select that. Um, they're going to work with their school counselors uh, to identify um, classes uh, that, that they're going to take uh, that, that will be supported um, both, you know, from a facilitation standpoint, as well as from a feedback and grading standpoint um, by our Brexville Broadview Heights high school teachers. Um, as they select those courses, um, we're going to ask that they take uh, four core courses, so a math, a science, a social studies, and an English class, as well as one elective at a time. Um, that being said, uh, if the student completes that first elective, they will be invited to take additional electives. Um, if you look at best practice um, online learning, um, you, you know, traditionally you're not going to sign up for, you know, the six, seven, eight, um, and in some cases at our high school, nine classes um, at a single time. Um, you know, if you look at, at, at all online schools, um, or if you look at situations where we have students using um, or taking online classes, uh, you know, traditionally you have them take a small group of classes, um, and then as they complete them, you add more classes to their schedule. Uh, in an effort to keep students uh, on, on pace for graduation and in an effort to keep them uh, eligible for, for athletics. Uh, we are requiring that all of our online students take five full credits um, at all times. But once again, um, once they complete their elective or if they complete a course, they'll have the opportunity to add courses. Um, as I mentioned, uh, online students will be following a schedule. Um, we're looking at starting that schedule at 830. So students would log in, they would check in. Um, with the BBH uh, teacher, uh, they, they would review goals for that day. Um, you know, they would receive announcements from the building. Um, this could include uh, virtual counseling sessions, uh, updates. Um, our school counseling team is working with uh, the college reps that traditionally come on campus. Um, those meetings will be done virtually this year. Um, our college now uh, representatives that help families with, with college planning, um, financial aid planning, uh, those meetings will be done remotely as well. Uh, so students that are taking the online model, um, you know, as they begin their day and, and then actually at the end of their day, um, they'll have a touch point with uh, our, our BBH uh, faculty members uh, to make sure that they get all relevant and important announcements um, related to those things that that, that, that come up during the school day that students otherwise would receive um, in announcements or flyers around the building. Um, after they after they have that touch point, uh, the students will have uh, 45 minute blocks of time to work on each content area um, into their schedule. Um, each of our online students is going to be is going to have a schedule uh, generated for them um, that they follow. Um, built into that, uh, we are going to have, you know, similar to the middle school, we're going to have our core content area teachers there to support. Um, they will be using the professionally designed uh, curriculum um, from Edgenuity, and they will be identifying activities, um, learning modules for the students to go through during those 45 minute blocks of time. Um, they then, our, our faculty, uh, then grade and review that work, and then they'll identify opportunities for intervention um, and opportunities for enrichment. Um, so built into that school day, um, so you know, perhaps on a Monday, um, there will be a 45 minute block of time for academic support. Uh, that could look like a, a 45 minute session with a math teacher, that, or that could be a 15 minute session um, you know, with a science teacher or, uh, you know, a 20 minute uh, uh, session with all the students taking that same, you know, we'll say it's an algebra or geometry class, um, they would get those students um, together uh, so, so that they could review some problems or, or go over some key concepts as a group.
Um, we also, um, for the online learning model, are building in uh, some brain break time into that schedule, as well as, you know, like a traditional lunch period. Um, you, you know, going back to the schedule, we think it's very important that, that, that our students are following a routine. Um, we experienced this past spring, uh, students wouldn't be logging into required Zoom sessions. Um, students would be completing or submitting work, at, you know, in crazy hours, you know, like, you know, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Um, and, you know, not having our students and our staff on the same schedule, um, it, it, you know, it eliminates or prevents uh, interaction that, that could be benefited uh, from, you know, it, you know, times when, when a student could get some direct feedback or some intervention from a teacher or, or benefit from some cooperative learning activities with the, with the teacher and then and other students. Um, looking at the, the questions we've received, you know, a lot of the questions that came in were very um, logistical in nature. Uh, we, we sent out our uh, our welcome back letter uh, just earlier today um, in that that highlights a lot of the events coming up. So uh, our freshman orientation did get shifted back. Uh, it will be August 27th. Um, we think it's very important for the class of 2024 to come into the building, um, you know, especially if they're selecting the hybrid model so they can get comfortable with their surroundings, um, they can navigate their schedule. Um, so on August 27th, we're going to we're going to split the group in half um, based on the, the alpha breakdown in the hybrid model. Um, so so there'll be a one o'clock session for the first half of the alphabet and then a 230 session for the second half of the alphabet. Um, we, we think that that uh, you know freshman orientation is very important for our students taking the online learning model as well. Um, so we will have a virtual session. Um, uh, those daytime sessions are supported by our National Honor Society students. Um, so these are some of our, 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 our most high achieving um, service oriented, uh, you know, very engaged in leadership uh, students at the high school. Um, and they're going to help them, you know, just have an understanding of how to navigate through their school day, as well as provide them some practical advice uh, for how to approach high school. Um, later that day um, in the evening, um, we're going to invite uh, one parent and their and the student to, to return um, for two sessions uh, at, at, in the evening, once again, broken up by alphabet. Um, so we'll have a 615 session for the first half of the alphabet, 730 session for the second half of the alphabet. Um, at the end of that, uh, there will be a 15 minute opportunity um, for the parent and student to walk the walk the schedule once again. Um, we realize that these are, you know, unprecedented times, um, but we still think it's important um, for our students to go through some of the traditional orientation activities uh, that, that we have every year. Um, another thing you would notice logistically, um, we're, we're trying to maximize our time with students while they are in the building. Um, so, you know, we took some of the some of the paperwork things, uh, you know, the picture day events, uh, you know, stopping by the office to pick up a parking pass. Um, you know, even submitting paperwork for our new um, off uh, or excuse me, open campus privileges. Um, we wanted to take care of some of those administrative tasks um, before the school year started. Um, so on September 1st and 2nd, we're going to have paperwork and picture days um, by grade level. Um, so we'll invite the 9th and 11th graders in on the 2nd, and I believe that the 10th and the 12th graders in on the 1st. Um, and they'll just go through uh, socially distanced stations um, where they can um, you know, confirm that their emergency medical paperwork has been updated. Uh, they can submit fees. Um, we've all also tried to simplify that this year. Um, our students are going to be have transitioned to a flat uh, $70 um, uh, school fee as opposed to all the individual fees that they paid in the past, as well as uh, as the, the consistent $30 technology fee um, that our students pay. Um, so they'll pay their fees. Um, if they're driving to school, they'll have the opportunity to purchase a parking pass. As I mentioned, they'll, they'll take their school picture. Um, and then if they have an, uh, an open campus privilege form, they, they can turn that in there. And then they'll also receive a copy of their of their schedule. Um, with regard to uh, some other logistical things uh, like, like lockers, um, we're going to allow, um, based on our survey results, it looks like about 43% of our, our students would still be interested in having a locker. Um, so we're going to allow them to sign up for a locker uh, on those paperwork and picture days. Um, I think that, that, that covers the most 
most of the things. Um, other items uh, I think that came up uh, were with regard to, you know, if you're doing the online learning model, do you still have the opportunity to access uh, clubs and activities? And, and the answer resoundingly is yes. Um, we think our clubs and activities, our sports are especially important, you know, to the health and wellness of our students. Um, for many of our students, that's why, you know, one of the chief reasons that, that they come to school and work hard every day. Um, so we want to preserve as much of that uh, as we are allowed to um, by the guidelines given to us. Um, and then the last thing I would uh, mention, you know, with regard to some of the, the events at the high school, um, our open house, we're going to be doing a, a virtual open house on uh, September 17th. Um, there'll, there'll be a, a website with uh, recorded messages from each uh, of our teachers um, for each of the courses that they teach. Uh, we're also going to have an online learning model open house where the teachers that are that are leading um, our online learners, um, you'll have an opportunity to interact with them and hear from them on the best ways uh, to, to, to support uh, your learners. Um, and then throughout the school year, we offer a number of uh, informational nights. Um, coming up early in the year, we have our senior parent night in September, and then we'll have a financial aid night um, shortly thereafter. Um, these evenings, uh, they'll be provided, you know, similar to this format where they'll, they will be live streamed. Uh, we'll have a moderator paying attention to questions. Um, so we want to make sure that our families still get all that, that important information um, about preparing for steps after high school um, or planning during high school. Um, but, but we'll make it available uh, via live stream uh, so all of our families have that or have access to that in a safe manner. Um, the last thing I would mention uh, for our students that, you know, especially our 11th graders getting ready for the PSAT National Merit Qualifying um, Test. Um, uh, we spoke with a representative from the College Board earlier this week um, that they've added a lot of flexibility with their testing. Um, so we will have two test dates um, for the PSAT in October, um, once again, by, by alphabet. So the first half of the alphabet will take it October 14th, the second half of the alphabet uh, will take it October 29th. Um, uh, the last note I would mention about, uh, you know, logistics, dates, those sort of things. Um, there will be another email coming uh, within, you know, the next week, week and a half um, with more specific forms and details related to paperwork and picture days. Um, you know, our, our district's doing some great things, um, you know, with regard to shifting to online payment options. Uh, and so we'll have all the details on how you access your account, pay fees, um, add money to your lunch account, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, but thank you, um, you know, for all the, all the questions that were submitted and the high level of engagement. Um, I, I know our team at the high school is extremely excited to, to be engaged with students, whether it's in person um, or online. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ost, Mr. Rings, and Mrs. Toth for your information to our families. A couple of things from the district level that have, the questions that came up that I just want to answer globally as it will pertain to all levels. Um, one question we had is, would there be some type of consequence for not wearing a face mask? Or are we going to enforce the idea of wearing face masks? And the, and the answer is yes. And it's not just necessarily face masks. We're asking families to provide their children with face coverings. Um, so if there are medical reasons with a doctor's note that a student cannot wear a face mask, we understand. We have also um, provided face shields and have purchased face shields for uh, in kid size and both adult size for any of those um, students who may have a medical reason that they cannot wear an actual face mask. We do expect that the face be covered and we will be enforcing that at uh, all levels K to 12. In addition, uh, families have asked, you know, what, what happens if somebody gets diagnosed with COVID? What is our protocol for shutting down? What is our protocol for quarantining? And I, and I can't reiterate enough to our families, we may or may not know this information. Um, we are not a reporting requirement. So if the health department receives a report that somebody um, it has tested positive and that attends our school, they will find out through that tracing, uh, going back and seeing who those those people are in contact with and, and, because, and based on that information, it will dictate kind of the protocol that our school district follows through. I can't encourage our parents enough that if you are exposed or your child is exposed that you do share that information with us, just as you've been very good about sharing when you know, a child gets diagnosed with strep or anything else so that we can do a notification uh, to families that may have been in contact with that student or staff member. 
Um, we are putting together a decision tree that we will be sharing out with parents so that you can see the protocol and the process that we will go through as a district should we get a positive case within our school community. So those were some of the global things. Uh, last thing I'd like to mention is just about kindergarten. I know we uh, needed a clarification. We, we said that there wasn't full day kindergarten. We're looking at kindergarten this time as either full time or half time rather than a full day or half day. And, and what we um, the, the way in which this hybrid model can work most equitably for all of our kindergarten students was to look at it that way. So typically a, a half day kindergarten student gets about two and a half days worth of instruction in a half day program. And obviously a five day a week student would get five full days. Because our hybrid model and or our remote model isn't a full time program, that is the reason we went to a half time program. So regardless if parents signed up for a half day or a full day, all kindergarten students will be attending the two days based on their the last um, the initial of their last name, either A through L or M through Z on those days that are assigned. Should we be able to come back in January or when all kids are in, we will revert back to that full day, half day model. So those kids that are coming, those two full days that they signed up originally for half day, if we can come back fully, we will come back as a half day program for those kids and a full day program for those kids who signed up. But currently the reason that we are, in, in, like I said, in the, in the hybrid model and in our remote model, those are both half time programs, which is why we, um, um, scheduled and aligned our kids in the manner of which we did for kindergarten. And so uh, again, I want to thank um, Mr. Oz, Mr. Rings, and Mrs. Toth for a lot of the details. I know we try to answer as many questions as possible. If you still have questions, um, we would encourage you to reach out to your buildings as they are going to have more specific information about that. We will continue to keep you posted uh, through emails. And if you haven't done so already, we do encourage you to fill out your declaration of intent for the fall so that we can um, begin final planning. Um, again, some of the, the special ed questions that people have, we can't start that process until we know survey data. We've had lots of requests, as Mr. Ring said, for people to switch. So if they are M through Z, they are asking to come on a Monday or Tuesday. Again, we cannot make any of those decisions until we see uh, the declarations from our families. And in addition, we have to weigh numbers. The whole point of going back in a hybrid model is to limit exposure and only have half the kids there at a time. If too many people want to switch days, it kind of defeats the purpose as to why we're coming back in a hybrid model. So I, I need families to understand that, you know, if we say no, it's not, it's, it, it's not because we don't sympathize with your, with your situation. It's really based on numbers. We're really committed to keeping that, you know, half of our students ratio on both those days. It doesn't make sense to bring back, you know, 75% of the kids on Thursdays and Fridays and only have 25% here on a Monday or Tuesday, so to speak. So please understand that we are keeping that Google Doc as Mr. Rings has indicated, and we will be looking at those numbers very soon after Monday and making a case by case decision as to whether or not we can accommodate some of those um, requests that are coming in. So again, I thank you for tuning in. I hope that this was helpful and um, provided you a lot of additional information. If you continue to have questions, please reach out to your individual buildings. Thank you very much.